Welcome to the PI World 2020 Roundup of the Year. And today we're with David Thornton, editor and now owner of Growth Company Investor, who we interviewed back in July and October of this year. So, David, how did the year pan out for you? What's performance year to date like? Well, Tamsin, um, it's uh, it's been an amazing year, as we all know. And, and rather than me waffle about it, I think a, a picture... Uh, speaks uh, speaks louder than words here, and uh, the slide shows uh, the value of the GCI portfolio, which is the paper portfolio I, I, I run in uh, in Growth Company Investor. And uh, it started the year around one hundred and forty thousand pounds, and it's ticking along quite nicely until the end of February, and then it fell forty four forty four percent in short order. Absolutely staggering uh, move, and then. We've had this recovery, um, and we've uh, we've got it all back, and we're actually in uh, in, in the black. So as at Monday evening, uh, the fourteenth, we were up ten uh, percent uh, for the uh, for the year. Um, so I suppose if we just valued our portfolio once a year, we'd shrug our shoulders and say, "Well, that was okay. Nothing, nothing really to write home about." Um, and the all share total return index is is, is down almost ten percent as well. So it's a very very healthy outperformance. If I'm if I'm being critical with myself, I'd say I should probably have done a little bit better than that because smaller companies have uh, had a very good year relative to the all share and particularly the FTSE 100, which has dragged down the, the return of the all share. Um, but I have to say, um, if you'd have offered me this uh, in March or April, I would have grabbed your arm off. Uh, it's been a, an amazing year, and I think the theme, my theme uh, for today is. Uh, uh, talk would be uh, patience and taking the long-term view. Um, that applies to a couple of stocks I want to talk about shortly. But um, it, yes, absolutely, we're running the equity funds and, and managing our equity um, investments for the long term, which should be five years plus. And therefore, while things that happen in March, April this year, stomach churning, keeping that eye on the long-term goal, and, and you know helps you stay. Um, stay with the program as it were. So what went really well and what sort of played out as you expected it to and contributed to that performance? Well one of one of our best performers has been Tremor which has been a bit of a drag um, previously. It's a stock that we bought uh, quite a few years ago as Taptica made a lot of money out of. actually sold some shares very near the high over four pounds. Uh, didn't bin the whole holding which was uh, something which went very wrong. Um, but I held on to it and actually uh, had added to it a couple of times. I did add it, add to it this summer, near, near, near just off the lows, and that's gone very well. But if you look at the chart here, I mean, it was actually starting to perform extremely well um, in the uh, towards the back end of of, of, of twenty nineteen. The the new strategy was working very well. The shift to video, digital video advertising, benefiting from connected TVs, and the the, the big move away from broadcast. TV advertising towards digital video, which they're capturing with their technology. And you can see the shares were coming up really nicely. It's a very encouraging pattern before we got COVID. Then obviously people worried about advertising and marketing budgets being slashed. So the stock was was really in the doldrums. Uh, but we stuck with it. Again, this idea of patience, sticking with a, a, a stock you like for the long term. It had always looked cheap and had a good balance sheet. Uh, and then it's absolutely roofed it over the last few months. So we've had three consecutive uh, months of uh, trading updates, uh, causing upgrades. Um, the shares do look very cheap compared to the US peers, and it is to all intents and purposes a US, uh, a US business. Um, so that's gone gone phenomenally well, and and you know better than I would have expected. I mean, it's 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 been. Uh, you know, been a double this year, uh, you know, in the context of the market. So that, you know, that's one that's really helped drive uh, drive the numbers. But that was supreme patience to hold from sort of nearly four pounds to go down to what was the low one pound. It did, it did break the pound barrier. It did break the pound barrier just as you can see in in in, in March, and and uh, we we added to it. I think around about one thirty, something like that, uh, in in the portfolio. Um, I mean, I do I do like holding stuff for the long term, but it, but at the same time, making sure I don't end up with a list of 200 companies, uh, most of which have long since lost the, the rationale. Um, but if it's something you fundamentally like, and it's just too cheap, I couldn't, bear, I couldn't bring myself to sell this with 
significant net cash in the balance sheet and uh, you know, a single digit PE. I mean, the market hated it for a number of reasons, but it, there, there just seems to be no, yeah. I mean, I, if you're running a very tight list, and that's something I'll talk about later, if you're running a very tight list, then I probably would have binned it, but I would never have got back in. So it's, it's, it's all about style and approach. Um, now, I like to be patient and give stocks time um, within reason. Uh, and that means you tend to run a slightly longer list, which I do personally. I put in my personal portfolio, I, 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 I run 25, 30 single stock names. Um, GCI portfolio is just 14 stocks. So I, I was carrying a passenger for, for quite a while with this one. But this year, it's, it's certainly you know, paid off. Superb. And what went less well this year? And what did you learn from that? Well, this year, this went extremely well as well, which I will do very quickly and then move on to something which went slightly less well, because and very unusually, we had, we've, we've, we've had a couple of bids. We've actually had three, if I include Rock Rose Energy, which we, we held earlier in the year. We had a bid for Codemasters, which uh, we then had a, a contested bid. Uh, so that has been an absolute slam dunk winner. It's been marvellous. And it was, it was absolute. This, this one, unlike, unlike uh, Tremor, this one, absolutely by the playbook, is a classic GARP stock um, trading a very modest valuation compared to its peer group, compared to its growth rate, made it a very easy stock to, uh, to like and to, to want to, to have and to hold. And then, of course, it's got bid for and we're, got, we're into a, a contested bid situation, which is absolutely marvellous. So to get a bid in a uh, tight list is quite unusual. To get two is, is uh, well, three actually with Rock Rose is, is quite exceptional. So we look at the next slide, which is one which could have gone really, really well for me. It's IMI Mobile, which I, I well, we spoke about in October. Um, and so I hope some, some of the, uh, the listeners uh, uh, did decide to buy a few after that. Um, uh, company I've known for an awfully long time, being bid for by uh, Cisco Systems. Uh, you know, this, is a, this just shows some of the quality and, and desirability of some of the assets on aim that they can attract uh, a bid from serious companies like that for their technology. Um, and as you can see, I, 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 was, I, was, I was really in a tight context of a tight list um, and I wanted to get more value and cyclicality into the portfolio. And IMI, I, I still liked it as a, a, as a long-term holding, but yeah, I had to make some room and uh, so it went. And back to my theme of, of being patient with holdings, giving them time to work out. If you're running a longer list, you can do that. If it's dull or quiet for six, 12 months, well, it's, it's, it's no, no bad thing. You can carry that. But if you're only running a dozen or 14 stocks, then, um, you know, you really have to sort of move things around if, you, if you're going to uh, make it, make changes to the portfolio. So we missed out on what would have been a, you know, really nice fillet to, um, uh, to performance. So, yeah, I mean that one. Uh, that one didn't go. Uh, didn't go quite to plan. And was there any learning from that? Looking back, are you for the reasons you've just said? Are you happy with what you did, or was there a learning? I, I looking back, I suppose. Um, I suppose the only thing I could have said, I, maybe I could have looked a little bit harder at some of the other, the other holdings. But my the remit I, I, I set myself in the GCI portfolio is to run a, a reasonably tight list. And um, you know, not you know, not not you know, basically not end up holding uh, holding everything. So it's one of those. It's just one of those things that that happens. And the the lesson is that um, you know, in a short list portfolio, that's the sort of thing that is going to happen from time to time. And if you, if you want to run your money like that, that's fine. Shorter lists, you'll get more volatility. You, you've got the if you get it right, you'll make a lot more money than you will if you're running um, a, a longer list. But equally, yeah, it, your ability to, for example, pick up on takeovers is going to be uh, going to be diminished. The longer list you have, the more likely you are to pick up uh, pick up the takeovers. It's just really a case of having to refine your approach and the way you know what suits you. As I say, I'm running the GCI portfolio slightly differently to how I run my uh, my own money. I don't have a ridiculously long list. Um, I really don't believe in those. But 25, 30 stocks, I think, gives you that little bit of flexibility and wiggle room to be able to sit with things uh, during periods where they might be dormant. And with small caps, you know, um, unless you go chasing after the latest hot story, 
permanently, which I don't think is a good way, good, good approach to make, you are going to have periods where companies go to sleep, stocks go quiet. Um, and that's where this patience has to come in. You have to keep reminding yourself, why am I in this? What is the story? You know, when the afterglow of talking to the management has died down and, you know, it's very easy just to quite forget quite what a nice story it is, quite how good, good they are, how much you like them. Um, and as during periods when stock goes quiet. And that IMR chart actually is a good example of that. It, it, it's a stock which it's not the high, never been the highest profile, despite being a, you know, quite a decent market cap within the space. Um, they've never really sort of gone out and banged the drum excessively about themselves. And you can see from the chart there, we've got many months where the thing goes sideways and then we have results and we have a big jump up. And we, we, you know, that was what happened in, in July. You know, it's ticking around three quid and then we just the next price is almost four pounds because the results are very good uh, and then it starts to do the same thing again and as i mentioned being a little bit impatient wanted to get some some value on board um i i i sold it two weeks before the bid hey ho happened, happened before it'll happen again i'm sure so looking forward what are you really bullish about which holding are you really bullish about for 2021 well, I was slightly tempted to go for something sort of uh, cyclical and, uh, and and value because that's a theme which I think you know will still have some legs. Um, but I decided thinking about something for the slightly longer term, uh, a stock I've really grown to like is Venture Life. Um, and actually, you know, the chart is not a great one here. Um, you know, in a way, the chart looks a little bit worrying. It looks like we're we're actually you know we're actually forming a an inverted saucer. It's 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 not, and it's a down around. I think it's probably a couple of p pence lighter than this uh, at the moment, about eighty six, eighty seven p. Um, I mean, this company has has really transformed itself over the last couple of years. Um, the uh, the strategy has been in place for a while, but they they've managed to bring in the right acquisitions, get get traction with uh, the volumes in personal care products. Um, they've got a very strong uh, deal they've announced in, uh, with, with a Chinese partner, uh, multi-year deal to take their product. Um, and as you can see from the, the slide there, I mean, sales are up 50, it's going to be up 50% this year. The 21 numbers are, are just way too low. I would kind of, kind of ignore them really. Um, so, you know, it, it, this, is, this is not an, this is, this is a, this is a cheap share. This is on a, a, a mid-teens uh, multiple of, of, of current year earnings, a company that's just grown itself 50%. Um, now, why has it come back? Well, partly this rotation into, into value, but also the company has uh, raised, raised some funds. Uh, they did a placing at 90p to, to, to raise some cash to do some acquisitions. Now, I'm, I'm not normally a fan of preemptive raising money. Um, but I suspect in this case, given the run up in the shares and the appetite for them, um, they probably thought it was they'd be able to move a lot quicker if they had the cash in their back pocket and could actually, you know, demonstrate to a vendor that the money's there. We can we can do the deal next week if you want. Uh, so I, I, I can forgive them for that a little bit. But obviously, they've got to get the deals done. Uh, they did identify I think there's two or three in the statement, uh, anonym, anonymized uh, businesses that they were, they were close to you know, close to doing deals with. But they've got to deliver de deliver on those and get those executed. Uh, when they do, then I would imagine we're going to get some, you know, quite juicy sort of upgrades and, and uh, accretion to, uh, to, to earnings. Um, the big thing with Venture Life is that this large factory in Northern Italy, uh, which they've been able to expand uh, capacity um, quite quickly and inexpensively uh, to really sort of um, raise the, the productive capacity of the business. Uh, so the tons of operational gearing that will, will come from that. Um, it's consumer branded products. Um, they've got this great relationship in China, plenty of growth potential. Um, so I think while it's not flavor of the moment because we're more interested in recovery and, uh, and so on and that chart, yeah, yeah it's not brilliant. Um, but, you know, as I say, I still think it's a, a terrific multi-year story. And, um, you know, they've, 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 put, they've put the groundwork in for the next phase. It's now a case of delivering the, ex uh, the, the, um, the acquisitions. And when they get announced, then I'd expect us to, you know, to be moving, moving on up again. Superb, David. Well, we'll have to catch up with you later in 2021 to hear how it's going. 
Thank you. And uh, thanks for the opportunity again, Tamsin, and good, good to talk. Um, so just tell people where they can find you. Uh, well, the website is growthcompany.co.uk and the homepage has plenty of information on it about uh, Growth Company Investor. Uh, you can also click a button there and download a free sample copy. Um, and if you if you like what you see and, and, and it strikes a chord with you, then um, please consider subscribing, which you can do via the, uh, via the website. Many thanks, David. And you'll find more interviews in this 2020 Roundup series at piworld.co.uk. Wishing you a very happy and prosperous 2021.